WEMF, presented by the Sound Museum. And we're the Young Jerks, by the way, here on WEMF Radio. Yeah, every Saturday at 6 p.m., one powerful hour is how we do it. I'd make a really high-pitched, like, Iron Maiden screaming voice right now, but I'm not going to do it. There you go. <laughs> so right now, uh, let's just switch it up. We have... Uh, Iron Maiden politics. Two, two, two. But we're not right-wing like Bruce. No. He's, like, totally right-wing jerk. Is he really? Pretty much. Is that he want, Is that why he wants to die with his boots on? Probably. I don't know. It's like a Ted Nugent type dude. Oh, one of those? I, pretty much, I think, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Ted... Uh, right. like, he, he, like, I remember at one concert we were at or something, he was, like, yelling at us because... People in Worcester were smoking weed at an Iron Maiden concert. And that's not in the okay. audience. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, a you're, a bunch, you're a bunch of pussies. You're a bunch of whips. You're smoking weed out there, you losers. It's like, dude, that's your audience, you loser. And it was like, you know, and I was there on a free ticket. Because he couldn't sell enough tickets. They gave it to the, you know, local music industry yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. That's what they do to a lot of these big venues. If they don't that's sell enough, they want people to buy drinks. Yeah. And they'll give them away to the, you know, radio stations. and the. It's not uh, even like it was a small venue or like he was like a small time, you know, no. just coming up, yeah. you know, band where they yeah. would, would not be. I think he was really angry because he hadn't sold that many tickets that night. <laughs> so that's that's really what the problem with Worcester was that night. It wasn't oh, the weed, man. but he had to blame it on the weed. No, you gotta. I was gonna have a scapegoat. So, anyways, <laughs> well, we were gonna introduce our guests who've been sitting we were, there, and I keep kicking one about of them. <laughs> I'm kicking one on one of the table. I'm very physical today. <laughs> All right, let's introduce them. They have a, uh, a great website. Yep. And a great YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. I, that's how I see them all the time. I see, uh, and also a, a huge Facebook page. I see them there as well. They have a lot of followers, a lot of, a lot of support. And the videos are really, uh, I think they're claim to fame. They do citizen journalism, uh, investigating local police uh, is really, I think, what they're doing. We're going to really find out what they're doing. But the website you should check out is Bay State Examiner. They're on Facebook, YouTube. Look them up, Bay State Examiner. And we have Maya, who I've seen in the videos, and Andrew here. Good to Mike, be here. Howdy. Thank you. Am I, well, we, uh, did we make any misstatements yet about who you are and what you're doing? <laughs> no, I don't think so. We're good. We're good so far. Uh, okay. That's awesome. So, so, yeah, go what, so all right, so now you, you have this, this, this website, the, the YouTube channel, you know, all these different, you know, ways of, of getting out there and getting to me. Like, and it's awesome, you know, you out there doing, like, doing the work, doing good work, you know, holding um, authority to task and, you know, speaking truth to power. And, and I love every second of it when well, I sit and watch it. Thank you. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know? Thanks. Yeah. And uh, so, well, like, well, what, like, why? Like, why do you do it? Well, for what me. What made you do it? For me, I mean, I started uh, doing sort of activism, street activism, as a member of Mass Ops. You know, we were starting, you know. We trolled Carmen Ortiz, and I was detained for an hour and a half roadside. Uh, and they slapped my phone until it stopped recording. <laughs> um, you know, how just you, just how do you work this thing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah just you know, police stuff. You know, um, and you know, I, after about a year of that, I realized that you know, you can blow a whistle over Obama speaking, but it doesn't make it into the media. You can do all of this interesting stuff. You can do all this interesting work. You can get involved in cases that you think everybody needs to know about. And no one will, um, because there's really not that much of a platform for it, uh, or at least there wasn't. Um, we're trying to sort of establish that, at least that's that's my sort of view. And I mean, it's also investigative journalism, looking at actual you know, issues with our government. And I think that there is some great reporting that happens, but there's also uh, room for a lot more. Definitely. Definitely room for a lot more. And not enough anymore. Every. Uh, you know the press, especially print press, has been getting cut. It's, you know, and and what gets cut is usually the best stuff. It's usually the fluff that remains, the cheese, the got to give the people what tabloid. they want. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at the uh, the metro. With, with that, you know, you get this free little paper every day, and that's what everyone reads now. And it's yeah. just like eighty percent, yeah, eighty I mean, percent just crap. If you just take absolute up, crap. If you got you guys, Lindsay Lohan, that's I mean, what it is. Do you guys get papers over your house? If you look at it, I mean, eighty uh, percent of it is like Associated Press. It's there's not. They usually don't have that many reporters working for the paper. Original journal, original stuff, yeah. yeah, for sure. And so, like, I've I've read like, um, you know, your folks' stories. Um, like, I remember the. Probably the most recent would be the what's going on with the Dennis Reynoso, which I'd like to get into. But I mean, like, well, let's let's talk about something a little fun first, maybe maybe kind of fluffy. The police car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the Decepticon. Oh, the yes. Transformers Decepticon car. Oh, okay, but it's yeah, also yeah. very uh, real life on the way you know these situations play out. How ridiculous! Well, yeah, so, a simple thing turns into. So what happened is. Uh, 
this guy in Braintree, he decorated his car to look like uh, one of the characters from the Transformers movies. He decorated his Maserati yeah, to look a like a Transformer. It's a luxury yeah, this car. Is this a car is car that's worth how much money? 150 G's? It was, like 100 it was, grand, it was 100 grand, but he only got it for 89. Uh, uh, he wanted us to know. Right. <laughs> um, I'm, I mean, not, that, I'm, not, I'm not that rich, guys. Yeah. That, that may be a crime in and of itself, doing that to a Maserati, but uh, it's probably not impersonating the police, which was what... So, the, yeah, what happened is he got pulled over one day by a cop who... He saw the car, realized it wasn't a police car, but it, it's... The, the character it's based off of is like a police car in the movie, I guess. And his car really doesn't look anything like a police car. I mean, it's black and white, but that's about the end of it. And so the cop pulled him over. They didn't charge him at the time, but they gave him... They took pictures of the car. They wrote up a report. And then they later, they sent him in the mail. They sent him a ticket. So he had to appear in court. And to us, it was just like, you know, <laughs> it's a waste of taxpayer money. It's a waste of this kid's time. And, I mean, if it had gone to... It didn't end up going to trial, but if it had and he was convicted, he could have gone to jail for a year. For what? I mean, for basically... For doing what kids do on Halloween, you know, they dress up in a police uniform on Halloween. That's the equivalent of what he did. And they steal people's candy, and lock them up. <laughs> in the end, the charges got dropped too. Yeah, didn't they? yeah. They, oh, well, yeah. laughed out of court. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he went to a clerk magistrate hearing, which is if the before it would go to trial, the clerk will hear it and he'll say, uh, you know, this seems like it might be a real thing or it might not be. If it is, it goes to trial. If not, they just throw it out there. First step, so yeah. Got knocked so, out. so it got knocked out there, and I mean, it was it was funny because I I was there at the time, and the cop who it's a police prosecutor, it's basically a cop who makes the case that this should go to trial, and he was like very unprofessional. He was like angry the whole time it was going on. Like he actually yelled at a guy in the audience of the court who like I think he muttered something under his breath, and he like flipped out. He like flipped out on him. He like yelled at him, and the clerk magistrate had to calm him down. Hmm. It was, and told well, the guy he could stay. I think the media pressure sometimes gets to him. You guys, like, that, I mean, that story was covered beyond just you guys, was, but I think you guys helped to get, story, yeah. yeah well, I think did. it helped spur the coverage. Your your website, your coverage, your video, that video has how many views? Like 12,000, 12, I think. 12,000, yeah. 000. Yeah, for <laughs> local stories, I mean, that's that's a good, I put out YouTube, so when I get something like, and, and a, I don't know, a month or two, you get that many views on one video. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when it's not like uh, some fluff video. It's like, you you said it was a fluff story for you, but it's well, a real story. This is a real story <laughs> of something that fluff, really but, happened yeah. to I, some person out I there. Did, I didn't mean fluffy like that. Right. I, know. I, just, I know. So, I know. No, no, I know. I know. I know. We're joking. We, know. So, so, we just want to make sure people understand what we're saying. For sure. Like, for yeah. sure. No, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's a funny story. It's silly, but, like, it's... When cops do this to people, it has real consequences. All the time, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and this is a kid, keep in mind, he, he said he was a civil engineer, he can afford a, you know, $80,000 car, and actually he said this was uh, his, uh, he has a, a winter car too, and it was like, I don't know, it was some other luxury car, I don't remember what it was, but it was not a cheap car. So he's somebody with money, he could afford a lawyer, and, you know, other people, they get BS charges thrown at them by the police. They, they can't fold. afford a lawyer. Public defender. Yeah, they you fold. Know, they take, fold. Take the deal. Take the deal. Yeah, they take, take the, the deal. deal. Public pretender. Well, they do what the UMass student did, and they uh, cooperate with police, and then I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from heroin overdose. Yeah, that's a terrible we, we, story. Yeah, that's a terrible. That's another one you should look up. Um, but let's talk about uh, the more recent one, the, the new video uh, in Lynn. And the police car, Maya. Whoa. All right. <laughs> we did, maybe, maybe, bef maybe before we go to that, uh, <laughs> while we were still in Braintree, you know, earlier that week, uh, we had gotten involved in another case that involved Braintree police. Um, was this the marijuana one? Yeah. We know about that. Derek, <laughs> all right. All right, go ahead. Um, seven hours after we published our story, uh, apparently they returned at least his money. Um, because, oh, really? They did return people the money? Are they returned, calling, absolutely. We put the phone number up, so people yeah. are calling the prosecutor, they're awesome. calling the police. And according to a Facebook post by, uh, I want to say it was Derek Eaton. Uh, who That's was, the guy yeah. who that that is, go um, taken away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was because of all the people calling in. So again, yeah, it's, it's, it's pressure. It's not just, you know, it's sort of the activist stuff where... Yeah. That's, and and so like pe speaking of the pressure, you know, like Mike was getting to with the. Well, actually, I want to comment on what they just said. Oh, please do. Yes, uh, you, we, you know, for our listeners too, um, we've had John Seed on talking about getting the medical marijuana back, and that there were some other cases out there, and we've referred and talked about this case in Braintree, and I know a lot of people know what's going on. 
Um, so that's awesome. Like, thank you for doing that. You know? Yeah, I mean, that kid, uh, that guy isn't alone either. There's a lot of people like that. I wrote another story about a guy earlier this year in Revere who he had his pot taken away. He said the cop wouldn't even look. He was a medical patient, I should say, and the cop, he said, wouldn't even look at his paperwork. Well, he was a state trooper, right? And uh, I think Albin, who's the super... Yeah, so in the Boston Globe earlier this year, they had a quote from uh, Timothy Albin, Colonel Timothy Albin, who is the head of the Massachusetts State Police, talking about how... You know, with medical marijuana patients, the cops can't always tell if the paperwork is genuine, so they have to give you a ticket even if it, you're, you're a patient. Because Which they, isn't he said, true. And the quote is, we have to err on the side of caution. But, I mean, if you're erring on the side of caution... You won't give a leave, ticket. Leave people alone. And that's right? what a Don't lot of police them. do. I mean, there are a lot of people... And that's the whole thing about this, uh, the change in the laws. Like, um, my friend... Again, we're going to talk about Michael Malta. He had a, uh, a couple friends who were police, and one of them actually came over his house one day because he wanted to get some help with the laws the changes in the law and, mm -hmm. and look at like you know how much is an ounce of weed uh, you know like seriously mm -hmm. and michael helped him on it and uh it's like police need that training number one and that's why i say thank you because you know it's not even about the specific case and if that person was really that much of a medical patient it's about the police need to know right. they need to know that basically at this point there's not a lot they can do to people who have weed on them they should just leave people alone who have weed i mean i think that's basically the law unless, also, unless you have large amounts and then even then you could still be protected by a card so why are you even bothering on weed nobody in the media cares no one in the public cares people want to be left alone it's going to be illegal soon you read, do you read and if you were in the Boston Herald earlier this year, over the past 10 years, the police in Boston, they have solved less than half of the murders in there the city. You go. So, I mean, if you want something to spend time on, how about that? Yeah, and that, it's well, just so and, much easier to steal people's weed. Yeah, yeah. And, and people are up in arms. <laughs> and people are up in arms about those murders. Those those families are still. It's been you know the last month. They've still been. They want justice for their family members, and it's not a lot that can be done because um, of the resources, and they waste the resources. It's it's crazy. But we should talk about the Frankie. You want to go back to? Yeah, I, I want to talk about. Um, Dennis Reynoso, which we've talked about on the show before in, in past incarnations of the show when we were over it on regular, but um, Dennis Reynoso, um, I'll let you explain it, but you were, you, you had been involved with Mass Ops, right? Absolutely. As well as with the Bay State Examiner um, in trying to find some justice, some answers for um, this young veteran who was murdered uh, in front of his kid. Yeah, right, his six-year-old son, right? Yeah, I was gonna say five, um, five. five and excuse. and yeah, six but, now. Six it's been now. over a year since it yeah, happened. Yeah, right. So um, the Lynn police uh, received a call um, of a man who was you know out yelling in the parking lot, yelling at cars, you know, and that's what they responded to. When they got there, they found nothing. Um, they alleged that some people like directed them to the Reynoso household, saying that oh, he went in there. Um, they also say that they spoke to a mailman who told them that Dennis was a veteran and that it was probably PTSD. Uh, so the Lynn police uh, did not then call for an ambulance because they've now had a report of a medical situation that may or may not still be continuing, but there's no evidence that it was. Uh, instead, they just you know knock on the door and we're coming in, basically. They're saying that they were doing some sort of welfare check because they didn't know who may or may not be in the house. So... You know, the the accounts at this point sort of start to differ because you have uh, three different officers who gave stories that don't necessarily all match up. But the end result was that um, Dennis Renoso was unarmed when he when they entered. Uh, the Lynn police say that he tried to, or, or that he managed to, pull a gun out of a uh, police officer, an ex Blackwater, uh, you know, employee who is now a police officer, uh, pull his gun out of the holster and put it to his head uh, and fire two shots, but into the ceiling and missed. Uh, and then at that point, after a struggle, um, the Lynn police shot. So he tried to sh the cop said that he tried to shoot himself in the head no, twice. No, 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 tried to shoot the cop. He put the cop, uh, the gun to the police officer's head, allegedly. And missed. And yeah, he said the cop said that he grabbed the gun and like shoved his arm away just in time. Right, and then there was a struggle where then a second officer also uh, apparently they they wrapped their hands around the barrel of the firearm, which went off twice more. 
No, it was two total. It two total. Nece- one yeah. at first, and then while they were struggling, it was another one. Right. So, so were any of these police hands tested for gunpowder residue? Or of course not. There was no document. So I, I should say... Uh, At least one, of, one of the things we do is the mass public records law, which is, if you've ever heard of the Freedom of Information Act, it's, for like, sure. it's like that for Massachusetts. You can get government documents. Uh, yeah. For the most part, everything is presumed to be public except for certain particular types of documents. So that's one of the things we do. Is there and other, we, not, speaking of that, because there are other websites doing that locally that I really like, like uh, Mock Rock. Mock Rock, is yeah. Mock Rock is great. Absolutely. Do you have any others that you recommend that you work with or that you... Muckrock is it's very cool because if it's it's something that if you're not really you don't really know much about the law you can just if you're interested in something you can they'll do the work for you you basically just tell them what records you want and then they they do it you make an account and it, it they charge a fee I think I don't use it though because I I know about the law myself so I just yourself. handle it but yeah is it M- M-U-C-K-R-O-C-K yeah dot com all right cool so um yeah, the public records law is something we do. So in this particular case, the Dennis Reynoso shooting, we requested everything, basically. All the all, the, all Everything that the prosecutors reviewed before they decided that it was a justified shooting. And what did you get back? And so, so far. we got a lot of it, actually. We got the videos of the police officer, the three police officers being interviewed the day after. Uh, they wouldn't give us the videos of the other witnesses, though. Uh, and we got all the police reports... Um, and some of the like the DNA test results, uh, gunshot residue test results, stuff like that. And we just sort of, I went over it with kind of a fine tooth comb. I watched all the videos. I looked at stuff, and I found like contradictions in what people say, stuff like that. And it's I don't know. It's interesting because I I think that when police shoot someone, it doesn't get the same level of scrutiny. scrutiny yeah. As when you know, it's, some, it's like anyone else. You don't, you don't else. It's like it's like uh, when you when the politicians run for office, the incumbent always wins. The police are like the incumbent. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so, well, I mean, so the, the, I know, mean, it's it's not you know it's not guaranteed, but most likely. Um, what do you think happened on this, and what is going to happen? I mean, I wasn't there. I couldn't tell you exactly what you, happened. But, but were, you, were you looking at all this information? Do you have any more of a, a viewpoint on what really happened? Do you do you have a kind of a? I mean, I don't like to speculate on what I don't know, uh, but uh, part of it is just that, so what happened is there, there's a guy who got shot to death, there's a grieving family uh, who, you know, they weren't there either, they don't know what happened, so they don't have answers. The little and boy think, knows what happens though. happened, though, and I'm, I mean, I'm sure he's told that to his family by now. Yeah, and I mean, the his uh, fiance uh, feels like he was probably murdered. Uh, I couldn't say, but I mean... I think that what's troubling is that it doesn't. These, these sort of things don't really get a lot of scrutiny, nope. and that's part of why I want to do this. I want to just put it all out there in the public. This is what they did to investigate it, because uh, so the people who investigate police shootings are the Mass State Police. Will they'll gather all the evidence and interview all the witnesses, and the district attorney is the one who decides if it was a justified shooting or not. And there's a big conflict of interest because, Absolutely. first of all, the state police, uh, if they're investigating a shooting involving the state police, I mean, there you go, that's a direct yeah. conflict or of interest. Or even city and towns, because they're yeah, working with city yeah, and towns for, and for informants true. and all this thing. And cost. that's true, too. Yeah, the, the state police work with but the local yeah, police. And that's an important thing to mention today, is is why you're doing that in a lot of cases, because it needs to be done. There, there is no transparency. And that's the thing. I don't hate police at all. I think a lot of people kind of come at it like that, and I and I really don't. I have friends who, that I grew up with who are police. I may not be like you know super tight, smoking weed around them and all that stuff, but like I like them as people. Yeah, and so I think the, they mean well, and I think uh, there are good cops out there. The, yeah, the issue isn't that all cops are bad; it's what happens to the bad cops. Do they get protected, or do they get you know? Do they get held accountable? And who investigates yeah. something and, like a shooting right. to yeah, really so, kind of like see what we're getting evidence. hit by a but, car? But, <laughs> right. You know yeah. what I mean? So back to back to my point though, the the district attorney when they investigate these shootings, these are the police officers' colleagues. I mean, they prosecute cases that are investigated by the local police for sure. So right. and actually, we we requested all the the list of the cases that the three officers who were involved in this police shooting had been in, and it was like several hundred. So I mean, there you go. Right. I mean, you know, 
if you're casting credibility issues for your own, you know, convictions in the past, you're you have a interest in not doing that. Um, and, and the Commonwealth Magazine did a great piece earlier uh, this year. They he looked at all the fatal police shootings for the past. Uh, I think it was since 2002 to the the present, and he found that not a single one of them, there were 73 of them, not a single one ended with the police officer being prosecuted. Not one. You know, and, and I'm and really glad all, that, that, that you guys are out there. You know, it sure does say a lot, and I'm glad that you're out there, you know, holding these police accountable. Um, and, I mean, just real quick to touch on it. I mean, you, you Maya, were actually whacked by an undercover cop's car. Um, which we were trying at, to get to. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so, a big thing. We got brushed <laughs> off. But we're out of time, basically. We are, I, yeah, we gotta are, say we are. that. We are out of time. Um, Bay State Examiner is the website. You can watch that video. Um, <laughs> It can, we're gonna we do we have to ask you two questions. Oh, we call it speed round. All right, we we <laughs> are like ten second answers, right, like sure. real quick. <laughs> Especially you, Andrew. <laughs> Sorry, man. And uh, basically, looking at uh, a couple things. Number one, can people get involved? How many people are working with you guys right now? Because you guys are like. Um, you're like what I do. You just you're always putting out stuff. There's always something going on. There's always another big story. How many people are there working here at Bay State Examiner, and can people get involved and help out on this? Absolutely. Uh, reach out to us on our contact page. Um, there are a handful of folks that sort of contribute just little bits and pieces here and there. I mean, we've got some great photography. Uh, we've got some folks who do guest pieces, you know, written work. Um, that's a great way if you if anybody's interested yeah definitely reach out um but it's basically us yeah you it's too the, we're the that's force right. behind it well you yeah. know what you're doing great work yeah and we thank, thank you guys you well, know you very guys. much and for last part about, I'll, I'll, there's two more questions i forgot you, you got them you got to ask the question quick about the, the what you were saying about oh, the, 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 the police the cop car, right so okay so it. so the police car hit you you were there there you saw an undercover cop at the protest for justice for dennis reno so you're like hey can i can i ask your badge number and the cop Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was the one year after the shooting. I was at the thing, and um, I saw an undercover cop shadowing the protest. Um, I approached the vehicle kind of cautiously, saw he had a center console, you know, radio mount that it was a cop. Anyhow, so I said, you know, can I have your name and badge number? He greeted me, kind of waved. I mean, he didn't, not verbally. He never rolled down his window, uh, and then he just started driving. And, I mean, I was standing there, so he drove, and the mirror of the vehicle struck me. Now, this was a kind of uh, poorly held-together Camry, and the mirror folded in. I was not injured. Um, He never, you know, at that point, he never checked on me. He never identified himself, and then he drove back to the police station. Uh, trying to get any sort of follow-up with the Lynn police was a sort of train wreck, and you can watch that on the base station. You were threatened with arrest. You found the car in the back parking lot. Absolutely. Oh, and they, and they were like... And what is the end result here? Because a lot of us have watched this video. What Do you think anything's going to happen to this? You know, I have no idea, but uh, I can say that it got 17,000 views in a week. Uh, we got hit with, you know, maybe 28,000 uh, on our site for the first two days. That's a lot of scrutiny for a police station that, you know, is not used to having anything investigated. Awesome. Thank you for the work you're doing. Bay State Examiner, Maya and, and Andrew, keep us updated. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks. Good to be Thank here. Thank you. Yeah. We are the Young Jerks. We're going to take a quick break. And Mr. we're going to uh, be back, and we're going to keep the marijuana train rolling. Yeah. The medical cannabis train. Yeah, for patients, especially like uh, patients like Haley. Yep. Like, uh, you know, the little kids out there that can't get the... 20 to 1 CBD. Hopefully we're going to talk about that too. How can we get these uh, kids, these strains that DPH have basically cut off and uh, kids having seizures and they're not allowing medicine. We have to like do it through the underground. Can we do it? Like what can we do? We have to do it. Apparently. And the protest. The protest to get this kid her legal medicine. That's right. So we are the Young Jerks here on WMF Radio and we will be back. WEMF Radio Now.